Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into some of the important best practices for unit testing in Java. All right. In this lecture, we'll discuss few of the important best practices that we can follow while doing unit testing in Java. Well, first best practice you can see source code structure. Well, it is a good idea to keep the test classes separate from the main source code. So they are developed, executed and maintained separately from the production code. Well, whenever you create a test classes in your project, make sure that you should have to keep those test classes separately from your main source code. Okay, so this will avoid any possibility of running test code in the production environment. We have a build tools in Java, right? Maven or Gradle. So we can use these build tools generated, you know, standard project structure to keep the test classes. For example, look at here the screenshot. This project I have created using Maven and Maven basically follows this standard structure like SRC folder within a SRC folder main within a main folder all the production code goes and then we have a test folder and within a test folder we can keep all the test classes okay so this is the standard project structure that Marvin has created and we can follow this similar structure to keep the source code okay we can keep all the production related code within a main slash java package and within a test package we can keep all the test classes all right make sure that whenever you write a test classes in your project you should keep those test classes separate from the main source code well let's take a look into the next best practice that is package naming conventions well this is a very important guys we should have to create a similar package structure in the src hyphen test directory for test classes this will improve the readability and maintainability of the test code. For example, consider this is a Spring Boot application project structure. And typically we create a different packages like controller, model, repository, service. Okay, so these are the packages we typically create in our Spring Boot application. And we keep, uh, you know, respective classes under these packages. All right. And in order to test this respective classes, we should have to create a similar package structure under src-test folder. Okay, look at here the example. In order to test a controller package related, uh, you know, classes, we create a similar package here and we create a test classes. Within this package, we create a test classes. Similarly, if you want to test service package related classes, then you can create a similar package under test folder like this and you can keep all your test classes within a service package and also for repository you can create a similar package within a test folder and you can keep all the test classes that you create to test repository related classes well having a package naming convention is pretty simple what you need to do is you need to create a similar packaging structure for instance within a java we have a base package net.java.springboot and within that controller right and in order to test this controller package related classes you can create a similar package under test folder like this controller and then you can create a test class for example employee controllers test all right similarly repository and service okay pretty simple whatever the packages package naming convention that you follow here that should be applicable to here as well in case of testing the respective classes all right great well next best practice is unit test case naming conventions well this best practice is very very important whenever you create a unit test case make sure that you will give a meaningful and descriptive name to your unit test okay the test names should be insightful and users should understand the behavior and expectation of the test by just glancing name itself okay so make sure that whenever you write a unit test you should give the meaningful and descriptive name to your unit test so that anybody can able to understand like what is the behavior and expectation of the test case by just looking into the name of the unit test case for example if you follow given when then bdd style 
naming convention for your unit test then it should be a readable and descriptive for example look at here given employee object when save employee then return saved employee so this is the meaningful unit test case name and it follows given when then bdd style format all right and another example you can see here given employee list when find all then return a list of employees okay and in this course we are going to follow bdd style naming convention that is given when then bdd style naming conventions okay so basically we divide a unit test into three parts first part is given second part is when and then okay we will see in the course how we can use bdd style uh, format to write the unit test cases well next best practice is appropriate assertions well this is also a very important best practice so whenever we write the unit test make sure that we will use the appropriate assertions to test the actual with expected behavior okay always use the proper assertions to verify the expected versus actual results we should use the various methods available in the assert class of the JUnit uh, framework or similar frameworks like assert j well in this course we are going to use assert j framework for assertions okay for example look at here assertions j framework basically provides assert that api and this api is very very useful and it has a capability to change the method calls for example here we are calling assert that method on top of it again we are calling is not null method okay so here basically we are verifying like the expected versus actual results well in this course we are going to use assert j library to write the assertions to verify the expected results with the actual results okay you can of course use junit provided assertions but most of the developers prefer using assert j library okay so in this course we are going to use assert j library to provide a proper assertions to verify the expected values with the actual values okay in in the course we'll see how we can use assert j library provided apis well the next best practice is mock external services well we just focus on you know writing the unit test to test a specific and smaller piece of code but there is a chance that the that code is dependent on some external services for some logic for example consider we are testing we are unit testing employee controller and employee controller depends on the external services like employee service and email service so so in this case we have to mock employee service and email service in a employee controller okay so make sure that whenever you unit test any classes you should have to mock the external services and in order to mock the external services we can use the frameworks like mock it easy mock or jmock it for mocking external services and in this course we are going to use mock it framework to mock the dependencies or the external services well next best practice is specific unit test well instead of adding multiple assertions to the same unit test we should create a separate test cases well whenever we write the unit test we should make sure that we will test a specific scenario we don't have to add multiple assertions to test a different scenarios within the same unit test we should have to write the unit test to test a specific single scenario okay if you have a multiple scenarios then you can create a separate test cases and you can you know add assertions to test the expected value with the actual values okay and of course it's sometimes tempting to verify multiple scenarios in the same test but it is a good idea to keep them separate then in the case of test failures it will be easier to determine which specific scenario failed and likewise simpler to fix the code therefore always write a unit test to test a single specific scenario okay so make sure that you will have a single assert statement in a single unit test and the unit test should be focused on testing single specific scenario all right great so these are the few 
you know unit testing best practices that we typically follow as a developer while writing the unit test cases okay and in this course we are going to follow all these best practices we follow the standard source code structure in this course and we will also follow package naming conventions unit test case naming conventions and we also use the appropriate assertions and we will mock the external services or the dependencies using marketo framework and we will focus on specific unit tests all right so these are the best practices that we follow in this course to write the unit test cases all right great i will see you in the next lecture